Billy Hatcher and the giant egg kicks ass, alright? I want to make it absolutely clear that I adore this game and despite what it is I have to say on the latter half of this video, this will not stop me from going back and playing it again. The story begins in the world of Morningland. Everything is at peace until Dark Raven and his army of crows arrive and make everything all spooky scary dark times. Meanwhile Billy is meeting his friends in the forest. Once he arrives, a chicken is seen being attacked by a couple of crows. Billy intervenes, saving the chicken, and this is when the chicken starts to glow, transporting Billy and his friends to Morningland. Billy wakes up in Forest Village, is informed of the dire situation by the voice in the sky, and the adventure begins. Because this is a 3D platformer, to me it gives off the same vibes of that of the Banjo-Kazooie franchise, and with the objectives always ending up with collecting these chick coins, which remind me awful a lot of the shines in Mario Sunshine, I feel as though the creators took a lot of inspiration from all of these past games I just mentioned. But who cares? Nothing wrong with taking good ideas and forming them into something new. Hell, that's how most of the best of the world's ideas work anyway. Look at the toaster. It's a grill that sits upright. Genius. The way this game is presented is great. Seriously, I don't think there has been a game that's been like this in a really long time. The closest thing I can think of that's come out in recent history that's kind of like this is the ukulele game. Everything is so bright and colourful and everything is so full of character. It's definitely one of the more charming games that Sega came up with during the early 2000s. And the music is pretty damn good too. I was humming the tunes for an awfully long time once I finished playing this. Also, they do this neat little thing that puts a smile on my face. When you start out in the world, it's all dark and the music reflects that. But when you free the chicken elder and the sun comes out, the music changes to be way more cheery and bouncy. Little touches like that always add to the charm and I love it. Seeing how I've already mentioned a little of what the game is, I might as well get started on the different types of quests you can do. I've already told you about the first thing you can do in each world by freeing the chicken elders, and the way you travel to these objective quests is sort of like a mishmash of Super Monkey Ball and Katamari. If you haven't played any of these franchises games, then I suggest you do, they're very fun and they actually helped me to understand the controls of Billy Hatcher, so give them a try. And other quests revolve getting to a certain point level, saving one of your friends, and sometimes even racing a very large animal to the end. And the whole point of this game is to have an egg in your possession at all times, as Billy is more or less useless without one. While you roll the egg around, it acts like a shield that protects you. However, the egg does crack and will break if you take too much damage. You can use the egg to take out bad guys in various ways, and the bad guys will drop fruit. In fact, you can just find fruits everywhere, but if you roll your egg onto the fruits, it'll get bigger. And the bigger the size of your egg, the more damage it'll do to the bad guys. Once the egg has reached its full size, it'll start to shine and glow. And if you do your special chicken call towards it as a full-sized egg, it'll hatch. However, depending on the type of egg, you'll get something different. In this case of the golden egg I mentioned before, it'll turn into chicken elder for the game to progress. But if you hatch one of the other eggs whilst you're out and about, you'll make little buddies that can help you out too. For example, this little otter seal thing. It has ice powers that can be used to clear out enemies during this stage where there's a big dino head that's spitting lava everywhere. You can use its help to stop the flow of lava and freeze it over to make a stone path. And there's a ton of stuff like that. It really is worth just rolling around and trying to see how many different eggs you can hatch to see what's inside. Kinda like a kinder egg. Talking about how the motion and movement works is difficult. It's one of those things that's better left to experience rather than described, but I'll try anyway. While rolling the egg, your angles are made more sharper, and doing this is less of a hassle than when you're running around without an egg. And of course, with the egg you feel safer and you can use it as a guard to clear a path for obstacles, and this is all well and good whilst you're running on the ground. But the game takes a huge nosedive when controls come to movement through the air. You can use the egg to bounce and reach places you couldn't before. If the egg catches a ledge whilst the character is hanging off a cliff edge, then you'll fall with the egg still on the ledge. There is no way to get the egg back. You can still find an egg to get you back up there. It's not as though you're stuck forever, but it seems like a small oversight, and sometimes it will cost you a life, and that's when it becomes unforgivable. Also, there are parts where you'll have to navigate through the stages via throwing yourself through the air. And unless you put a lot of time aside to practice, you will have a hard time convincing yourself that you're doing the right thing. 
because I'll tell you this right now, at no point in the game does it ever give you a place like a mini safe area tutorial stage to give you to grips with this sort of thing. You just gotta hope against hope that the next time you do it, it'll work, and you won't end up snapping your GameCube controller in half. Now that I've gotten that off my chest, I'll tell you about the boss battles. And bloody hell, they can be really frustrating. The second quest within each world is to travel and find where the boss is hiding, and once found, you can battle the creature. However, because the controls are so much more accustomed towards puzzle-like environments, which 95% of the game is by the way, having a boss battle really throws things off. But it's clear that the boss battles were designed around the fact that you have limited movement. It's very rare that the boss will do something that involves your character do some quick time dodging. Though this does happen, and when it does, I guarantee you you'll slam back in your chair and shout in disapproval. This isn't a jab at difficulty, but when the difficulty is taken advantage of based on the game's lack of certain mechanics, that's when it becomes bullshit. So how can this be done better? It's pointless saying where the problem lies if you aren't willing to suggest a solution. I only have a couple of ideas, but I feel that if there were less bottomless pits, it would definitely encourage the player to continue rather than fumble around the place. So many times I made a simple slip in the controls and it cost me a whole bunch of time. I mean, this isn't Super Monkey Ball. The aim in that game is to reach the goal under the given time without falling off the bounds. That works for that game because the core design is built around that. But Billy Hatcher is an adventure collectathon game. There was more than one way to make it more challenging without adding death drops. Another idea is to give the default character without the egg an attack. Now I understand that the characters are supposed to be helpless without an egg, that's why I think the attack should do zero damage, but makes the enemies fall back or something along the lines of that. It was often I found myself struggling to find an egg and escape the wrath of the bad guys without getting hurt. A little help would have been really appreciated like a zero damage knockback attack to give me some breathing room. Despite the hiccups that are present throughout, I still had a very enjoyable time and even though by the end I was ripping my hair out of how frustrating the controls can be, or how awkward the bosses were calibrated to the game's initial playstyle, I can still say I would recommend this to anybody looking for a charming video game with plenty of challenge. Seems to me that people who play games don't like the idea of having a game for the whole family to enjoy. And to those people I have to say this, the moment you pick up a controller, you automatically volunteer yourself to enjoy yourself, therefore should not be taken seriously to lose oneself and to have fun. So just lighten up and give it a try.